and welcome to Unpacking Activities. The activity we're going to unpack today is two-way crossword puzzles. And unlike a traditional crossword puzzle, which you do by yourself, in a two-way crossword puzzle, the words are divided between the two students. So one person has half of the words and the other person has the other half. Also, the definitions are not provided for the students, but rather the students have to define the words for their partner to understand what the word is. And so one positive aspect is indeed that learners are actively engaged in negotiation of meaning. They need to express meaning and also they need to understand what their partner is telling them. And as you can probably tell, it is a fantastic activity to help learners get better at using circumlocution strategies. And that is a skill that I think is good for all levels. It's also good for vocabulary retrieval. We are obviously targeting certain words. There are those in the grid and thus we are helping them strengthen those connections to be retrieving those particular vocabulary items. And it can also be good for spelling because the learners need to spell the words in order to complete the grid. Among the potential pitfalls, probably the most obvious one is that this is not a low prep activity. You need to carefully select the words, then you need to create the grids, and all of that takes time. Unfortunately, as far as I know, there are no crossword puzzle generators that will create a two-way crossword puzzle. All of the crossword puzzle creators out there give you either a blank grid or the grid with all of the answers, all of the words. And so one way you can create your own is to use a crossword puzzle generator to create the grid blank. You write the words yourself half and half, and then you make copies or scan it or do whatever you need to do with it. That's probably the easiest way. And of course, the other possible solution would be to do two one way crossword puzzles. So first one learner has all of the words and needs to describe and then they switch. And so they do a new puzzle, but now the person who described before is now the person listening to the descriptions and completing the puzzle. Now, one thing you definitely have to keep in mind when you're preparing your crossword puzzles is the words. The success of this activity depends entirely on the words. They need to be concrete enough and easy enough for them to describe them. And also they need to be words that the learners not only know what they mean, but they're familiar with enough to describe them to their partner. So for example, I used a two-way crossword puzzle one time that contained names of countries. And while the learner understood that it was a country, it is difficult if the learner doesn't have the background knowledge to provide clues for their partner to understand which country they were talking about. And if you're thinking, well, why can't we just let the learners do some research online or maybe look up that word in their book just to make sure that they know what word they're supposed to be defining. And that's okay, but we still have the issue of Will their partner understand the description and be familiar with that word in order to complete the grid? That's why you still need to make sure that the words that you choose are going to be familiar to all of the learners, not just the learner who has to define them. One thing I highly recommend is to provide learners with useful phrases so that they use these circumlocution strategies, such as description of the object, size, color, shape, what you use it for, etc. Analogies or comparisons, are they similar or different to something else? And even associations, do they associate that with a particular person or place or brand? Some possible variations of two-way crossword puzzles could include to have the learners create them. So you could have some groups creating the grids for other groups. And depending on your learners, you could highlight dialectal differences. So for example, you can tell the learners that to define the words, they need to refer to what that object is called in other dialects. 
All in all, I'm a fan of two-way crossword puzzles, and even though they're more along the lines of language practice as opposed to real communication, to me, they still have a lot of value, and it's one more tool in your toolbox. I think it could be good to change things up from time to time. If you have any suggestions for improving crossword puzzles, or if you know of a two-way crossword puzzle generator, please, please, please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time!